welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. My name is Sammy. Welcome. If you are new to this channel, we do DIYs with science and there's always tons of laughter to be had here. Today, we are going to be working on placemats. I found a bunch of mine at Dollar Tree, but they have them everywhere, y'all. They have them at Dollar General, Walmart, you name it. We are going to be playing around with them. So if you think you'd be into that, let's get going. So look at all of these placemats and there's so many more you guys because I mean Walmart has a whole collection, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, you can find placemats anywhere and they don't just come in this plasticky stuff. You can find fabric, you can find nautical rope ones. I mean the possibilities are absolutely endless with the placemats so I know you guys have a stash. Get them on out. So for the first one, we are going to take three of the longer Dollar Tree signs and I love these because they did not have the holes in the top. So for these, I just had to take the twine and the staples out of it just to, you know, prep it, I guess you could say. So we're going to go ahead and flip these around. I'm going to take the long paint stir sticks and we are going to glue those down horizontally on our seams easy peasy one on the top one on the bottom and then i will pop off those uh two hearts that are there i'll also put one at the very top and this is just going to give us um, an opportunity to be able to you know put a sawtooth hanger on the wood or um, d hooks whatever you choose to use then of course i need to cover the back of our sign so nobody can see that ugly mismatched nests so i'm just taking shipping paper and then i'll clean it up with a craft knife next we are taking aged gray by rustoleum i'm going to do this in sections so you want your paint to be wet you don't want to oversaturate then i'm going to use this wood graining tool this is in my amazon store link located in my description box it does take some practice so if you get this and you're like uh this isn't looking right you just have to work with it it takes some time to get the hang of it but essentially it's just like a rubber wood graining tool and you slightly rock it back and forth to get this beautiful faux grain look with your paint once i was done with that i decided i wanted to put the placemat this is that new one from dollar tree that's absolutely stunning i'm gonna put that at the top and you guys don't do what i do okay do as i say not as i do i was like okay i found the placement it's nice and even i'm gonna do this in sections but gorilla glue doesn't dry right away so it's like moving around as i'm trying to lift it up so just mark off your sides and know where your placement is put the glue on all at once and then flip your placemat around <laughs> and put it down. So I used Gorilla Glue because I just didn't want the chance of it peeling off with hot glue. Next, I take these furniture tacks and I cut a little bit of the end off because I didn't want it to go through and then pierce the back. And then I'm just hammering it in with my wire cutters because I don't know where my hammer is. But I do that on all four corners of the placemat just to give it a little bit more detail. Next, I'm going to take some jute cord. And this is the jute cord that I always say that I take off the silver planters from Dollar Tree. I don't know what it is about this stuff, but it is just like the most perfect thickness, I guess you could say. So what I do with this is I tie a knot, then I put my furniture tack through the knot and hammer it in. I thought that this was a nice little detail versus wrapping the twine around the wood and leaving it like that. I thought it just kind of tied everything in. And for this placemat, if you guys didn't notice, it does says it says make memories along the way. So I thought it was perfect for a photo little gallery and, you know, and you can hang this in your house on a patio and I just thought it was super cute. So let me know what you think about this and let me know if you already have that wood graining tool. Hey guys, so that was the first DIY. I thought it came out pretty cute. And to be honest, you guys, there's only so many things we can do with placemats. I kind of felt bad. So don't come after me if like majority of them do turn out to be signs. But I mean, 
if they're not fabric, there's only so much you can do with them. So I hope they at least get your creative juices flowing and they inspire you to pull down those placemats that I know all of you have been collecting from Dollar Tree and get crafting with them. Um, I wanted to remind you guys that Baby M will be here in the beginning of June. So I will still be posting videos Tuesday and then I'm going to be having Spotlight Saturdays, which is going to showcase a different creator every weekend. So those creators are gonna be an absolute surprise to you. So make sure your notification bell is on and then make sure to check down in the description box because I will be posting a bit more on my vlog channel once Baby M gets here. And with that said, you guys, please make sure you're liking and subscribing and commenting because it lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my video and that you're digging me and you're digging the channel and they will recommend it to the entire world. All right, you guys, let's get back into these DIYs. For this next one, we're gonna use this lavender placemat and we are going to cut the mason jar and lavender out. I'm gonna try and cut all of the negative space out I can so that it'll only leave the mason jar and the like florals and greenery on here. I also cut off like those corner lavender pieces because we could use those later. All right, so I took that tray that you saw, I sprayed it with a gray primer paint, and now I'm using my Crackle Medium by Folk Art. This is specifically for chalk paint. It is in my Amazon store. I take my chip brush and I try and do the less strokes possible because you get better crackle and then i apply my heat to this because it just gives you more of a it gives you more crackles sorry about the beings here and then i am going to take plaster by waverly and i'm going to brush that on and you guys there is a difference there's two folk art crackle mediums there's one for acrylic paint and there's one for chalk paint. So just make sure you're looking out for that. They're both in the Amazon store in the description box. So I'm gonna brush this on, again, using the least amount of strokes I can. And then I will give you, look at that. Ooh, girl, I love that crackle. It does it for me every time, every time. This is my favorite crackle method for sure. All right, now I'm going to take that lavender mason jar and I'm gonna start off by hot gluing the bottom piece on. And then I take my detail glue gun to get like the points and stuff of that greenery nice and attached to our tray. Then taking, this is actually the Dollar Tree lavender, y'all. Like, do you see that quality? It is stunning. So I'm just taking hot glue. I cut the stems down as far as I could because I just wanted it to stay on like the lip of that mason jar. And then I'm kind of just following where the lavender is on the placemat as a guide to where to hot glue my pieces. And then I kind of fill it in with some of the leaves and, and things like that as I'm going and working with it. So now I take some burlap ribbon. I just folded it in half. This is the uh, wire one from Dollar Tree. I folded the ends in, hot glued that to one side, and then I will do the same thing for the other side, and that's gonna cover all of the stems of our lavender. Oh my gosh, sorry. Um, and then I will take a finger bow. I do have a video on how to make a finger bow and I'll be coming up out with an updated version as well um, coming soon. So I make a uh, twine finger bow and then we're just gonna hot glue that to the middle. Again, it's all about the details for me, just that little added step, you know? And then I'm going to take some twine. I'm gonna hot glue that to the back for our hanger and we are done. And this is just a cute decor piece. It came out so good. I love the added detail of like the crackle in the background. And this just shows you could take placemats and just cut out what you need out of them, you know? All right, this one's easy peasy. We're going to take one of the round signs from Dollar Tree, this lemon mat. They also have a new lemon mat as well. I'm gonna trace around my sign with some permanent marker, and then I'm gonna cut inside the, the black line. 
Now I am using Gorilla Glue and then I'll be using hot glue. I have learned that with the placemat signs, especially on the pizza pans, if you only use hot glue and use it as a door hanger, it will peel off. So make sure you are using some kind of like super glue adhesive. So then I attach the mat to my sign. And you know, I had it in my mind that I was gonna cut a perfect circle, but that doesn't happen. So I had no other option but to apply the nautical rope around it. Now I'm not, um, I'm applying this to the top of the sign, not the side. You could also use split beads too, that would be cute. Then taking um, some Dollar Tree ribbon, I'm taking, I don't know what that other ribbon's called. It's like a mossy looking stuff. And then our lemon ribbon, I'm gonna do a double loop finger bow. I'm gonna layer those on top of each other. And then I am going to attach this to where the seams meet on our nautical rope so you can't tell. Okay, come on. How long does that bow take? There we go. I will attach it up on the side so you could still see the font and everything. Now you could leave it like this, but my vision is like a, like a, uh, what am I, an addition to a wreath. Like here we go, right here. So I have this wreath and I'm just gonna stick it on the front. Now, I use tape to attach it because I wanna be able to recycle my wreath and like reuse it over and over. Then I take Dollar Tree lemons, I staple some wire to them, I feed them through, attach, and then I have myself the cutest little wreath. I mean, look at, look at how easy it is to staple those to these lemons. And then everything can be recycled and reused as far as the wreath goes. And I think this turned out super cute. I love how bright it is. Perfect for summer. And it's a great way to, you know, use just the wording of some of the placemats from Dollar Tree. All right, so this one is not a plastic placemat and this is gonna be such an easy DIY. So I fold it down and I'm just using this as like my size reference. You have to play around with what size you want it to be. I hot glued the sides. I really don't know if with this material fabric hot glue would make a difference or not, but I folded it and then I fold, this is a, such a bad explanation. So just watch the video, but I fold the top over. I'm gonna attach a magnet to the top and then I'm gonna attach a magnet to the inside of our, what is gonna be our clutch. So I highly recommend, these are Dollar Tree um, magnets and it does work, but I would probably use a heavy duty magnet on the inside portion of the clutch or Velcro if you're planning on using like a phone, cards and things like that in there. So then I found this little button, hot glued that to the middle just to add a little bit of detail in there. And this is so cute. Like I will actually use this and I might actually update it for a better magnet on the inside so that I could carry my phone. But I thought it was super easy and very cute. And we can't do placemat DIYs without a pizza pan one. Hello. So this is the splatter top for from Dollar Tree and it fits inside the pizza pans perfectly. So I'm gonna take that, place it on top of this super cute placemat. I'm gonna trace it out and I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna cut our salt and pepper shakers out as well. Then I'm gonna take that Gorilla Glue once again and apply it to the back of my placemat along with hot glue. I stick that on the inside of our pizza pan. And now I'm gonna take that nautical rope and I am going to start putting it around our pizza pan. I do about three rows of this, that way it's on the inside and outside. Here you go, finished product, voila, looks great. And next we are going to beautify it. So I take some ribbon from Hobby Lobby, I wrap my ribbon into three loops fold it in half, cut the sides, and then I am going to take some twine. Usually I use a zip tie, but this was what was next to me. Then we make a little cylinder for our middle piece. I will cut a tail out as well. 
dovetail that out. And then I'm going to just stack all of this on top of each other. So our tail, our bow, our cylinder, and then I take a mini zip tie and we're going to zip tie that all together and you have yourself a fabulous bow. All right. Now this is just the back before I attach the bow. I want to make sure that I attach a hanger. So I take that same nautical rope and hot glue it to each side. Super easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy. All right. And now I'm taking the salt and pepper shaker and I'm putting mine where I had seams of my nautical rope meeting up together. So you couldn't see it anymore. So I attach my bow and the two salt and pepper shaker pieces there's the second one and we are done and i think this one is so cute this placemat is just adorable in general and then the things that you could do with it by cutting the little salt and pepper shakers out i mean possibilities are endless with this one and i just love the colors and the fonts that they used for this placemat Okay, so we have this beauty, which is a beautiful spring truck. I am just going to use the truck. I'm going to cut out all of that negative space once again. And you guys, I really wanted to do a lot more with these placemats. I had ideas for days, but most of you know, I'm almost 38 weeks pregnant and there's only so much I could do. And I just couldn't sit any longer. So if you want to see more placemat DIYs, please let me know and I will get those done. So I hot glue that placemat to our galvanized plate. This galvanized plate is from Dollar General, by the way. Now I'm taking some split beads. I spritz them with some water, coated them with some acrylic paint, and I am gonna go ahead and lay them out before I start gluing so I make sure my spacing is right and that, you know, everything fits the way it's supposed to. And then I'll just hot glue that on. Next I take raffia. And I'm going to wrap it around one time, squeeze it together in the middle, wrap another piece of raffia off in the middle, and you have yourself this super cute rustic raffia bow. And these are so easy to make. So I have to end up popping off one of the split beads so that my bow isn't crooked. I hot glue that up there. And then I'm just going to take, again, some twine, some hot glue, attach it to the back here. This would look so cute in a kitchen, I think. And then I take a vinyl decal. This is just in the Cricut like, design space, Bloom Where You Are Planted. This was also on the original placemat, but I thought this turned out really cute. I love how much the wording stands out and then the bright colors against the galvanized metal to me looks absolutely stunning. All right, there's a lot of these here. All right, so here's another one of those other placemats that aren't plastic, there's some kind of material, I don't know. But we're gonna cut a square out of this. Well, kind of, I measured it seven inches by seven and a half inches because I was lazy and just wanted to use the lines that were already there for me. And then you're gonna bend those corners back and you're gonna make the smallest slit you can See how small that is? You're gonna do that in all four corners of your square, or for me, like a rectangle. Then you're gonna take some jute cord. You need two pieces. I measured mine out at 30 inches each. You're gonna push those through those little slits. So we do one on this side, and then you're gonna crisscross on the other side. You're gonna tie your knots on the bottom, and then you're gonna do the same thing for the other two corners going across. So like an X shape, and an X is in a shape, I don't know. And then you have yourself a super modern like plant holder. These will also be great for like real planters outside because of the material, the water just goes through them. So these are gonna look so cute with so many different planters. All right, our last one, you guys, I just wanted to show you that you could use these placemats as backgrounds for so many different signs. So I'm going to take my tag. I am going to cover the back with some, I think this one's actually wrapping paper, um, but I'm going to cover that up so we can't see that anymore. I'm going to take our placemat, trace it out right here. I'm going to cut out and remember to always cut 
inside of your line. Then I attach it to my tag by using some hot glue and my silicone spatula because I didn't want to press too hard on it because I didn't want the hot glue to come through the placemat. So this actually worked very well. I didn't have like any of the hot glue come through. Then I'm going to take um, these little animals I got off of Dollar General signs and they actually worked really well just stacking them on top of each other. And we're also going to recycle the, the metal stars that we took off this sign, put those on there sporadically. You have, and like you could add a bow. This would actually be a really cute, like 4th of July-ish kind of sign if you use the right like stars and stripe bow up top. That would look super cute. So again, you guys, if you wanna see more placemat DIYs, Comment down below with like just a smiley face. I know everybody has a smiley face. So thank you all for being here with me today. And I will see you back here on Saturday with another video. Have a good one, you guys. Here we go. Look at me. Look at me. I put on earrings because we're going to the kids' carnival. And I thought it would like look cute for my husband and stuff. So... <sighs> Yeah, we need it this high because my bun, my bun's pretty high. All right. <laughs> I like how this has become my new spot to record. And you know why? Because anytime I like randomly do my makeup, I'm like, oh my gosh, you should probably do that video because you're probably not going to have your makeup done for a while. <laughs> I mean, these are already hurting my ears. Not hurting like they're heavy, but hurting like they're fake, you know, like that, um, the itchy feeling. That's maybe I should take them off and then put them on before I go but then I probably won't remember to put them back on. So, so this is it. You guys go over to the vlog channel. I'm going to be posting, putting this, the baby nook together. I wish I was more consistent with posting over there. Cause I feel like if I was, then the vlog channel could do well, but with life right now, I think, I think you all understand. So thank you for being supportive and being there. I appreciate all of you that stick around and watch this half of the video. And, um, I will see you again next week. I'm trying to pre-record as much as I can so I don't have to worry if she comes early or whatever. Okay. Bye, my friends.